Okay, our next one um, is some circuit rules. So lesson number five. So there's a video um, on this bit. So make sure you have a look at the video. Um, it's not so much the first part of this, but then we'll get on to the circuit. So circuit rules, for example. So Kirchhoff came up with some laws. So these these two rules are about they're called Kirchhoff's laws. Um, so what they're about is conservation of two things: charge and energy. All right. So you can't lose charges or gain charges just because. Um, same with energy, you can't lose energy or gain energy just because. So we'll start with the one that's related to charge and this little diagram uh, shows that. Alright, so here's the diagram and this diagram is, is about conservation of charge. So remember in terms of um, the charge, what we said is that the current is the amount of charge in coulombs over time. So the amount of charge, the charge of course is carried on the electrons, so it's on the electrons. Oops. On the electrons. So over here we've got in our diagram, we've got two amps coming in here, we've got three amps coming in here, and they're meeting at this place there. So, what Kirchhoff's law is saying in terms of conservation of charge is that you can't gain or lose charge just because. And seeing as the charge is on the electrons, and that relates then to the current, if you've got two amps coming in and three amps coming in, then two plus three is five, you must have five amps going out. Because if you don't, if you have less than that, then you've got some electrons that have disappeared. And if there's more than that, you've got some electrons that have just appeared from anywhere. So that's the first law, and that's to do with the conservation of um, charge. The next one is about the conservation of energy. And this diagram um, shows about that. So um, just going back, so conservation of energy. So let's just put that here so that we don't have to keep flipping back. So we're talking about conservation of energy. Now remembering that energy is relating to the voltage. Alright, so the amount of volts is relationship to the energy. Alright, and it's related to the energy, E over Q. So Q of course is the charge, which is to do with the electrons. All right, so the electrons. So the volts and the electrons and the energy. So the electrons are moving around the circuit and they're carrying the energy. So here if we've got five volts here, so that's relating to the energy. So we can't energy can't disappear somewhere or just appear somewhere. So if we've got these little electrons, nice looking electrons, they are travelling around the circuit in this direction and around they get to here and then they get to a light globe and so light globes have got resistance so they've got to use some of that energy to get through and then the light globe glows the air like that. So then the electron gets to this point here and some of its energy has been used and then gets to this one here and there's another light globe and its resistance is higher so it glows brighter and then it gets to here and it's used because there's nothing else now it's used it's, uh, it's it's energy and then it heads back to the battery and it gets some more so the key thing though with this if we're conserving energy if there's five volts equivalent of energy 
then there's got to be five volts of equivalent of energy around the circuit. So these two here, in this example, for it's two volts and three volts, but that uh, splitting will depend on what those things are. Now, if they were exactly the same, then they would be split evenly. So that was Kirchhoff's second law, is the conservation of energy that around the circuit that the voltage is, uh, comes the voltage around the circuit is the same as what's in the in the battery supplying in the first place. All right. So that when we get into voltage and current in a what we call a series circuit, and so that diagram there's a series circuit. But the one that's in there in your diagram in your diagram in your notes is this. All right, and a very nice diagram it is as well. So this one is what I call the series circuit, so because everything's all one after the other, that's in series. So Kirchhoff's laws, what Kirchhoff's laws would, um, would tell us, so in terms of the current, because it's a series circuit, those three currents must be the same. There's nowhere for the electrons to go. They can't zip off the... Tahiti or anything like that, they've just got that one pathway to get around. So what we know is that those currents I1 and I2 and I3 are all equal. So what we need to get in our heads is that series current is the same. All right, now the other of Kirchhoff's laws we've talked about, the energy, which is related to the voltage. So we've got these here, V1 and V2 on this thing here. And so there's just those two circuit elements. There could be more, but in this case, there's just the two. And so whatever energy is here and here, when we add that up, it's going to come up to be the same as the battery. So what we know is that V1 plus V2 is equal to battery the EMF. Remember I said before in one of the previous ones that EMF and, and uh, voltage is the same things, just different terminology. EMF is often used for um, batteries. All right, so what do we know? Then we've got to get in our heads. So series means that voltage add up. And what they add up to is the battery. So, we're going to develop something here. It'd be nice for us to know about these resistances, because there's some resistances here. Call that one R1, call that one R2. There might be more. All right, so... We would like to find out, you know, what this whole circuit, what, what's it operating like? And so, in this circuit here, so we've got our little electron just leaves the battery, heads around, conventional current, remember, heads around, goes through here, uses some of its energy, uses some of its energy, and then gets back to the... All right. Then, what I can say is this. I can say that the EMF, equal to the first voltage plus the second plus any more there might be. So then from that, if we from Ohm's law, V equals IR, the EMF is talking about the battery, so that's the, that's the whole circuit what that's getting. And so that would be the current and because it's the whole circuit, I'll say the total resistance of the whole circuit. But for V1, which is just this one here, Ohm's law applies to that. Then it's a, V1 is equal to I times whatever that resistance one is. And V2 would be I times whatever resistance that is, and so on. 
Now, what we notice here on the right-hand side is that we've got current in every term. So, if I take current out as a common factor, we've got R1 plus R2 plus 2 plus any others. And then what we notice is we notice that if we divide both sides by the current, that will cancel, because the current is the same in a series circuit, remember. So our total resistance is simply just the sum of all our resistances, however many we've got in our um, circuit. All right, so in your notes, uh, there, there's some gaps, some spaces for, for that stuff, so um, don't forget if, you, if you've missed or not quite sure what goes in there, uh, refer to my notes on the, on the website. Alright, so, series circuit, let's have a look at, at an example. Then. Right, so here's our example, so we've got some... Uh, Two pieces of nichrome wire. Um, nichrome wire is used in heating elements um, simply because uh, it, it heats up quite a bit before it melts. So, all right. So, hey, there's two different bits. So, one of them has a resistance of 10 ohms. The other has a resistance of 20 ohms. So, in part A. It says what current would flow through them, what power would be produced in them if they are separately connected to a 12 volt battery. All right, so we have separately, all right, so we're looking at them when they're apart. So the voltage is 12, the resistance of, the, of one of them is 10, and if we use V equals IR, 12 equals I times 10, and so we'll find that the resistance there, oops, sorry, not the resistance, the current, oops, too far back, we'll find that the current uh, is equal to 1.2 amps. For the other bit, the 20 ohm one, Still 12 volts, but this time the resistance is 20. So again, V equals IR. And uh, so 12 equals I times 20. And when you divide both sides by 20, you get 0.6 amps. All right. Now, we'll ask this also when you go back and check it said the power as well um, so power is VI of course so I better do that now so the voltage is 12 times 0.6 so the power in that particular one there is uh, 7.2 watts and the blue one the 10 ohm one the power VI of course, and that's 12 times 1.2, which is 14.4. Uh, Alright, so there's part A. Alright, part B, if they are connected in series, what is their total resistance? Series, oops, wrong one series total resistance all right so there we are this is our total resistance thing it says add them up all right so our total resistance will be the sum of the two resistances which is 10, whoops, 10 not 12 10 plus 20 sorry more than 20 and that's 30 ohms, so that's part B. Alright, part C, not just part C, say. Part C says, when placed in series across the 12-volt battery, what current will flow through, 
flow through them and what power will be produced. Alright, so we've got our 12 volt battery and we've got our 10 ohm and we've got our 20 ohm and we want to know what's the current and that's 12 volts. Alright, so what we do here with this when we're looking at now the whole circuit, we're looking at the whole circuit here. So when we're looking at the whole circuit, what we need to use is we need to use the total resistance of the whole circuit. All right, so we still use Ohm's law, V equals on R. But now this 12 volts is across both of those. So we need to group those together. What is their resistance? That's a total resistance of 30. So, the 12 volts, some current flowing around this circuit, and this circuit has a total resistance, not 20, total resistance of 30 ohms. Alright, so, to find our current, our current course would be 12 divided by 30, which is 0 0.4 of an amp. Alright, so there's 0.4 of an amp flows around that circuit. Alright, uh, the second part of that question of course, what current flows through them and what power will we produce? So remember of course that power equals VI and the voltage is 12 volts and the current we just worked out to be 0.4 so we do that and we get 4.8 watts. Alright, okay, so that's it for this lesson. There's kind of, there's another part uh, coming up um, a little bit later, but in your notes here, there's, I've already skipped one question, question 19, um, and there's some more uh, questions in your notes, questions 20 uh, through 2, questions 26 that relate to this. So these are questions are actually in your notes. Um, again, if you have any questions relating to this video, make sure you ask.